Magic Kingdom is the map. Starting to the bottom left, we have the FXO player who won against MVP earlier. Uh, sorry, against Hero with the 2 1. FXO, Lino! FXO, Lenoch. One win in this group. And he's up against a strong Protoss player who was able to take down MVP in the best of three series. The first one that he played today. This is the Pink Panther. It is. Tati Party. Keeping that pink color. Going for an in base build. Similar to what Hero did earlier on Abyssal City. I want to see the Immortal push. I would love it. Parting, there are no excuses. You said you can beat any player in the entire world. This is it. This is the last big tournament for you at the end of 2012, and now you have to show it. And it's actually also interesting because these two faced each other twice in the last few months. Actually, I'm wrong. They faced each other three times in the last few months. But the last two engagements were both won by Lenok without dropping a single map. He won against Parting in uh, the in uh, September in Kodes and in October in the Rhythm Mix Online Tournament. Both times with a 2-0. So Parting has to kind of break that curse, show us his immortal push, put it on the table, and kind of measure it against Lenox, yeah, Lenox defense. Yeah, that's what we're going to see, maybe. This map is a map where, though, Parting has decided to go for the in-base play. It doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to see it. In fact, since he hasn't made a three or four yet, we're going to see Nexus first, and then you can go into the very normal immortal push off of the in-base play. If you go for a gateway, things get a little bit weird, but he's not doing that. The last player, the last Zerg player that was able to beat Parting in a Televeus match was in the Code S season, uh, in Code S season 5, Sniper with a 2 0. But since then, Parting 3 0 Scarlet, one against Subby with 3 2, one against Sen, all of those guys he met at uh, WCS Global Finals. And he took down Life with a 3 0 at the MLG Tournament of Champions. So now he's up against Lenok, and we all know how Life versus Lenok went the last time. That was actually won by Life. That was at the MLG where Lenok took second place. So now Parting has to prove himself here. I'm so excited about this. I'm, I'm really, this is brilliant. This is, this is Parting. Parting, I swear to God, if you don't show us all your immortal push at least on one of these maps, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, he may be trying to save it, but we'll see. For what? I don't know, for his later group, or his perhaps playoffs. <laughs> He's facing Lenok, well, okay. Yeah, okay, granted, there's also still DRG to yeah. think about. There's also Sniper yeah. if he, that he Goes could face the other group, yeah. in the other group, and there's also life, but still, I want to see it against Lenok. We may see it, man. This would be a great clash of styles. Lenok's great defensive style, oftentimes, uh, that's how he likes to play it, up against Parting's aggressive style. So far, though, of course, we have to wait for the core to see what he's going to do. With the Forge in the main, it's a little bit more difficult for Lena to find out if he's dealing with some sort of plus one build. It's also not going to be possible to snipe the Forge. Speed comes here for Lenok. Not skipping on that. We don't have him with the third base just yet. Usually with the timing that you want to hit is like at least 420 if you go for a normal style. But that's also with the speed a little bit later. And Lenok has shown that he really likes to be a bit more aggressive. That's one of the things that we've seen in the games before. Ooh, great little sneak by by Parting. He's going to come over here and see that there's no third base just yet. And obviously he's going to want to stick around and make sure that he can check for that long term. We actually have the Lings come back after the Overlord spot at the Probe, so Probe's not going to be able to stick around too long. So he doesn't know if Leon's taking a third base exactly or not. He hasn't been able to see the gas either, so he has to play a little bit safely. There's an Evolution Chamber going out for Leon, actually, really fast. And Stargate. That's kind of trending these days. Yeah, I have to say, man, Stargate is suddenly like the build to do. Stargate is the new robotics. Can't scout just yet, but... And even the second cannon. <laughs> he saw the games that Lino played against MC. No, he wants to be safe. Yeah, that's of course very different here, but still. It's kind of funny that he drops the second cannon. I really like it. Very Playing fast, it safe, yeah. plus one melee weapons for Lino coming out of that. Uh, or the... The Zerg Engineering Bay, the Evolution Chamber. <laughs> yeah. Looks like the Stalker killed the Probe, but don't be alive. <laughs> Kill steal. No experience for uh, Lino. Oh, wait, that was a different game. Yeah. Could have happened in Heart of the Swamp. Yeah. Yeah, in a different way, but true. Blair comes down here for Lino. What? 
Are you thinking, Lean Octopus, what is the plan? I guess, I actually think he's gonna go for, well, he's on two bases, so Mutus, usually... right? But maybe Nidus? I don't think so, with plus one. The thing is, if you go in, exactly, the plus one timing rather indicates that he wants to go into more of an Infestor play, but usually if you see the Infestors, we have a double evolution chamber, you can go with Infestors into the third base. If he's really afraid of the Immortal push, that might be one of the reasons why he does it like this. But now with even the Mackle Hatch in the main base, I can certainly see him go for Mutalisks here, even though it's not the usual style. And he would also face Phoenixes now, so I think that will also influence his choice. Because Parting is going to move out with the Phoenixes yeah, fairly soon. He sees it right now, right for Lair. That's actually really lucky. Yeah, yeah so now, now I would be really surprised to see uh, a spy. This has to be, there has to be an infestation. Man. There it is. You're right. Yeah. You can't go Mutas off two base this fast against such a high Phoenix count to begin with. You watched uh, DRG play against Hero on this map. The Phoenixes are actually so fast here that they're the fourth Phoenix is not even there. He's actually in a really good spot here. It's just focusing on the Jones. He doesn't even lift the Queen. It's like, why would I lift the Queen? You know, a lot of players will actually argue that it's better to take down only the Queens and to ignore the Jones for a while. Because if the Zerg player has normal injects and is already on uh, three hatches, he can just rebuild his Jones so fast. Yeah. And it's harder for him to get the queens back into the game. But these days, most Zerg players have more queens than they have hatchery. So if you kill one, it's not going to affect them too much. On the exactly. other hand, Linok has three here. Yeah, but it's it's a matter of preference. It's kind of it depends on who you talk to. Yeah. But you can ask three Zerg players, uh, sorry, three Protoss player, players and Zerg players, and all of them will give you a different, all, quest, uh, different answer. All the Zerg players will tell you they don't like me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Patrick Glance finishing up here, and the best we can come time down with those. A little bit of drone harassment here on the gas drone, so he's going to actually have to micro three more drones back in, but he does so immediately. The four seals here are important, and unlike Hero, he does not botch. This is ready to react immediately. The probe! Oh, that was close. Yep, close, but he drops the pilot. Completely walls off here, and therefore no opening for Lino. Really map aware. And uh, Parting is just trying to figure out how he's going to transition now next. He goes into Colossi, going to get the Twilight Counts out so he can get plus two. Just everything's very normal. And uh, Linok is going for plus two for Lings very quickly here. And this is, of course, much more important later on for the Broodlings because the Lings are not going to be his composition for forever. Parting with those two in the transition into uh, the. Yeah, into the first Colossus now, and the extended Thermal Rents, also the blink that he needs. Nice! More skills here, yeah, that kills a lot of Thermal That blink is fourth the way done. Uh, Rogue dodges. Lino with the three bases now, and I feel like he should get a fourth base pretty soon, because Parting is already on three, and Lino will not be able to crush this. Parting is actually ahead in supply, and that's always a very difficult position to be in when you are a Zerg player. When your opponent is able to get ahead in supply, especially. <laughs> what did he just kill? What was drone. that? I think it was a drone going to make the fourth base, in fact. So yeah, I hope so. That would have been a little bit awkward if that was an Infestor, but I feel like the, the Phoenix only lift stuff, they don't shrink it. Yeah, that was a drone. Yeah, had to be one. He splits his Phoenix is really nice and makes sure that there's no that there's no fungal in here. Look at that. We have Reno going into the same style that DRG played. He's going into those those mutalists. I feel like Lenox much better prepared though for this than DRG was. The timing he's using here is much more crisp. Yeah, well he's got thing more is, mutas and he's got investor support. Yeah, but Parting also has Blink. And the Stalkers. And the Colossi. The it, Colossi it, are the big things with the Phoenix support. It's a matter of scouting now. If he sees this, he should be able to just get warp in more Stalkers. He sees it, he warps some more Stalkers. Did he see? So, he warps a bunch of Stalkers. Yeah, probably the, the Observer that he has. Great swing on the Phoenix here. One is off to the side. He actually could escape with it. Yeah, or at least... The meters are totally spotted here. Yeah. Good luck with those, Linok. No shots fired. Linok has to be careful right now because that is a bit of an awkward spot. I could actually even parting see if Linok com uh, just really commits to this, I could see parting going for the pulse crystals. 
He could. He's gonna need a flea beacon first. He, I could see Parting making three cans at each base and just walking across the map because yeah. then Leon can't really fight with all the cans that are already there. Then the additional cans he adds, and then he just goes for an attack. Maybe even leaves the Phoenixes at home with the cans and attacks everything else. You know, later on he wants to have the uh, Fleet Beacon anyway, so I could really see him do that. But I mean, for now, the plus he three attack upgrade Phoenixes, will do. So, uh, I mean, seven more coming out. The Pulse Crystals are actually a great idea at this point. I, you, you mean Mutalus, yeah, seven Mutalus. Yeah, and seven more Mutalus, so he, I, I could see the Pulse Crystals. But for now, with all the energy, uh, with all the gas that he invests into additional Colossi, I don't think that he really has the resources, but for... The later stages of the game, that would definitely be an option. Look at Leonkin, nine additional ones. This actually puts him up to 25 Mutalus. He really wants to commit to this. There are only four Phoenixes left, but 22 Stalkers. And uh, what Parting should do is definitely drop a few cannons before he moves out. He cannot move out without having a defense at home, and one cannon will not do it. He needs one. He needs a few at the main base, he needs a few at the natural. He has already a couple, but I feel like he needs more before he can really commit to an attack. The main attack. base has no cannons. That's, that's the most vulnerable point. And even the third base can't. He only has really two that cover the mineral line. Uh, the third base, I feel, is the most defended. It's got three cans that kind of block all This angles. is this old school style that comes back, and I, I think that's really cool. I mean, we've seen this T do this a lot, but he was one of the guys who always mentioned, well, I should actually go for the Infestors, but for some reason I'm gonna go for Mutalis. And now Lino goes back into this, as did DRG, but Lino has a much more potent army here with this. And Parting also doesn't have the timing that Hero earlier had against his opponent when he faced DRG with a similar composition. Stalkers blink nice. in. That was a cool the snipe. Investor. That was a really nice snipe. Just a few Stalkers. Phoenix is already here. Four more cans going down. He's not leaving anything to chance here. I think he's just going to go around the map. With the amount of cans he's making now, six more cans. I think he wants to walk across the map. He's reached the going point where he's like, I'm just going. And That's 35 Stalkers as well. Oh, wow. This is so good for Martin because those cans are just going to defend everything. And Guardian Shield. Oh, those cannons don't These cannons are not, but the ones on the other side of the map are much stronger. You know, that's what I meant. That's exactly what I meant earlier. He needs more cannons. That's 25 Mutalists. The cannons will delay you a little bit, but this, this is, is the brutal. He needs to, to go for the base train, and that's what he's built here. The links yeah. are actually wasting themselves right now. Here come the Mutos. One star no is way. warped, and that's so many cannons. That's too much. Yes, he will kill them eventually, but he loses too many Mutalists, and he can't afford that. At the same time, at the bottom, we have now Parting just moving in. And Parting wow. is a genius, man. I can't believe more Poros did not do this. And now suddenly those Phoenixes are all selfing. This is exactly what he needed to do. He knew it. You guys out there, you knew it as it. well. And he did it. He and did this it, is going to win him the game, most likely. Yeah, Lino is not dead yet. He can't use these Mutas to fight in the army. Oh. Oh, look at this production tip. 19 more mutas. That's actually going to put him up to like 40 mutas. Oh my god, but the third base is gone. Third base is gone. Yeah. Blink, blink, blink. Ah, uh, too late. Well, Not into the spine roller. He actually just needs to make sure that he fights these main as well. And so far, so good. Where's the Guardian Shield? Where there it the is. Bundles? Nice Guardian Shield. This Even is the Phoenix is helping. Lino. Not with mutalis. Yes, it out against the cannons. That was too smart by Parting. It was a good decision by Lino. If you want to go for a base race scenario, but Parting played it too smart. GG. That was great, man. I love to see that. People base race without cannons. That silly Parting's like, you base race against my 14 cannons on my third base. I'll take that okay. any day. Let's be serious here for a sec. That might have looked a little bit overwhelming in the end, and maybe a little bit silly, but guys, you have no idea how many Protoss players will lose to this uh, style that Lino just used. Hero earlier could use the time against DRG, and he did it, when uh, DRG only had like 12 Mutalists, but this were, this is more than 25 Mutalists that he had, and a lot of Protoss player will lose to a base race scenario, and Lino knows how to play it, but Parting was just so patient and so safe that he built how many cannons were there at the natural? 10? Yeah. So there was Maybe so like, many cannons. Actually, I think there might be more. I think there might have been like 14 at the end. He could not make this work, and this was really Parting playing a, a really safe and great game, having all the right decisions, rather than Lenor uh, making huge mistakes here. It was just, it was counted. That was exactly the reaction that you need to go for when you realize that you're up against the player who wants to base with you. All right. Leenok down a game now, but you know both these players are 1-0 in the group, so losing here is not as impactful as, for example, Heroes lost last time. But both of them want to take that 2-0 to join DRG, tied for first place in the yeah. group. Daybreak is map number two. Harding Man, he didn't show us the Immortal Push just yet, but we could see it here. They didn't have to. 
Yeah, he's up a game though, and I would like to see it on this map. I love it. You know, this is Leenog's map choice, so not why just go for it. Well, we'll find out right now. Leenog needs a win here if he wants <laughs> to take the 2-0. You hear that? Are you ready for this? Oh yeah, hell yeah, I am. That's good to hear, man. So am I. This is the 2012 Blizzard Cup.